In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up a custom workspace in Premiere Pro. Hey guys, my name is Scott and I make tutorials like this one on Premiere Pro, Photoshop, and videos on tips and tricks for freelancing. So please do consider hitting that subscribe button and hitting the notification bell so you don't miss any of those. Alright, let's get right into how you can set up a custom Premiere Pro workspace. So I first want to talk about how workspaces are designed in Premiere. All of these panels you see can be adjusted and moved to pretty much any location you want. For example, I can pull the project window, which is in the lower left part of the workspace, into this upper left window if I'd prefer it in that spot instead. There's also a bunch of panels we don't see at the moment, but if we go up to window and click on that, we'll get a drop down menu with a bunch of different panel names. If I was to click on one of those names here, for example, effect controls, it would open that window up in my workspace. So there's actually a lot of panels you could potentially have open at the same time if you wanted to set your workspace up in that way. At the top of the program, you'll see a list of different names, which are preset workspaces. There's assembly, editing, color, effects, audio, libraries, and graphics. If you click on one of those, it will reconfigure your workspace to that particular setup. So if I was working on a color grading project, I could hit the color workspace and Premiere would bring up the preset color workspace that's better suited for color adjustments. But the most obvious workspace you'll probably be spending the most time in would be the editing preset. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And now I'll just take you through how I set up my workspace in Premiere and how you can save it as a custom workspace. I usually keep my project window towards the top left so I can see all my media files in a large window all at once. Hitting the arrow button to the right, you'll see a drop down menu of the different windows within this panel. The first one here is markers. If you wanted to make notes on a particular section of a video clip, you can mark it. For example, maybe a crew member steps into frame, maybe a boom mic dropped into the shot, you can mark that part of the clip so that it can be easily found and removed later. In libraries, this is the place where you can add stock footage or images or music from Adobe's cloud storage. This can be convenient when you have a lot of media that you use on a frequent basis and you don't want to store all of it on your hard drive. And you can access all of those clips through the cloud pretty simply. The events window is in case an error happens while you're editing, like maybe an error with a plugin or maybe some media goes missing suddenly, an error message will appear in this window, giving you some information about what happened so you can try and troubleshoot the issue. Lumentary Scopes is mainly for color correcting your footage. If you right click on the panel, a menu will come up with different options and presets to visualize the footage color and the brightness. I'm not going to go too much deeper into this right now because this is a video on workspaces, but it is something that I can deep dive into in a later video. Next we have the captions window, and this is used primarily when you have subtitles that you're editing into your footage. Using the text windows, you can change what the subtitle says and its font size and color, and you can change the timing of the text. Now, subtitles do not automatically appear in Premiere for video files. If you want to add subtitles, you'll have to have the audio portion of the video transcribed. There's a number of services out there that will transcribe your videos that are paid and for free. One way to do it for free is if you export your video and upload it to YouTube privately, YouTube automatically creates subtitles for every video. So you just need to go into YouTube studio and then select subtitles and then just find the video that you want and then select to download the file. You'll get an SBV file, which has to be converted to an SRT file for it to work in Premiere Pro. There's a number of free conversion sites online that you can use to do that, such as captionsconverter.com. I would say that YouTube does an okay job when it comes to transcribing videos. It gets most of the words right. However, if you need it to be a perfect transcription, you're much better off hiring a professional service to do it. With the media browser panel, it lets you view files on your hard drive that you may want to import into Premiere. If I search for a file and find something I want to use, I can simply drag and drop that item into my program window above. Another way to import is to use the shortcut Command I to bring up a file browser window and you can search for files that way. I'm going to briefly go over the information and history panels as they're pretty self-explanatory. Info just gives you the file information of a clip, its size and aspect ratio amongst other things. The history tab just gives you a rundown of actions that you've taken in Premiere since you last opened the project. You can clear your history by right clicking and selecting clear history. Also, if you don't want to see any of these panels, just select the list icon and select close panel. By the way, the unlock panel option will separate the panel from the window so you can move it around however you like. Then if you want to add it back into the panel, just drag and drop it into that area. Premiere Pro has a lot of built-in effects that can be found in the effects panel. There's a ton of different video and audio effects that you can play around with 
everything from color correction to audio delay. I may do a video on just the effects panel at some point because there's so much here to cover, but typically for my workspace, I keep the effects panel in the lower left corner, and that's where I can easily find video transitions like crossfades, dip to black, exponential fades, and other effects that I use on a regular basis. I usually keep the toolbar on the far right next to my audio levels panel. I'm not going to go too much into the toolbar at the moment because I covered this area in my how to get started editing a Premiere video, which you can find by clicking the link above. The effects control panel is one of the most essential parts of Premiere Pro in my opinion. This is where you can control the size of the video frame, the opacity, control the audio levels, and change any text that you might have on screen. I normally keep this window in the top right corner of my workspace, and this allows me to quickly glance at the settings in my effects control panel and also check the preview monitor to its left. Speaking of the preview monitor, the workspace setup I'm showing you is what I typically use for a one screen editing setup. When I work from my home office, I have a second monitor that is solely dedicated as a preview monitor while I edit. But for purposes of this video, I'm showing you what a single monitor setup looks like because this is how I would edit if I was on my laptop while on the go. For all of the other main panels in Premiere, like the timeline, the audio levels, and the source monitor, I keep those all in the same position as they normally are in the default setting. And I just want to ask you guys, what is your preferred setup? There's a ton of different panels inside Premiere. Do you have a particular panel that you never use? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you're enjoying this video so far, please hit the like button and feel free to share this with anyone who might also enjoy it. Okay, now let's move on to how we can save our custom workspace. Now that we have our workspace set up the way we want, we can save this layout as our preferred setup each time that we open Premiere. So to do that, we go up to Window, Workspaces, Save as a New Workspace, then just give your workspace a name, I call mine Scott's Workspace, and that's pretty much it. Each time I open up Premiere from this point forward, it will automatically open up to my default custom setup. At the top of the program, you'll see a list of different preset workspace names. These are workspaces that have been preset up by Adobe that are designed around specific editing tasks. I'm just going to go briefly through each of these. So with the learning tab, Adobe has set up learning materials around how you can get started in Premiere. They're short clips that introduce you to the program and the essentials that you'll need to start editing. This is a great panel to have if you're just starting out and want an overview of Premiere, but for editors who are familiar with the program, this panel isn't very necessary. So to hide this panel, we can right click on the list icon, click edit workspace, then we can drag the learning tab down to do not show. The assembly panel is a great panel for reviewing and organizing your video clips for the first time. You may have a project where there were multiple types of footage recorded. For example, it could be an interview setup with multiple guests. In this panel, you can go over each clip and create a separate sequence for each of the different guests. Or maybe you have B-roll footage that was shot and that can be organized into its own sequence. So then later, you can easily find and pull B-roll clips from that sequence. The next few panels are pretty self-explanatory, but I'll go over them briefly. The editing panel is typically the default workspace that comes out when you open up Premiere Pro for the first time. From here, you can start customizing any of the panels and move them to locations that best suit your workflow. The color panel is where you can adjust all kinds of different settings involving brightness, contrast, RGB curves, saturation, and a lot more. You can definitely spend a lot of time in here playing around with many different settings to get the right look for your clips. The effects panel is very similar to what I showed earlier, just this preset highlights the effects panel more prominently. So we see all the same effects that I showed before, and this also has the essential graphics panel included. The essential graphics has things like lower third graphics, animated text, movie style credits, basically a lot of different graphics involving text. This is another panel that's pretty straightforward in its purpose. Here, you can adjust all kinds of different settings that are audio related, or you can spend some time going through each of the audio effects that can be added into your clips. I think in a future video, I'll go over how you can actually send audio clips from Premiere to Adobe's audio editing program, Audition. From there, you can make adjustments and easily send audio clips back to Premiere, but that's for another video. The graphics panel highlights what I showed you in the effects panel, which is all of the essential graphics text. There's also the Adobe stock window. If you click on that, it will show you all of Adobe's graphic templates that you can buy. There's a little dollar icon next to the ones that you can purchase. Otherwise, the templates are free. Metalogging, in a way, is similar to the assembly panel in that the panel is all about organizing. This is a really important panel if you have a ton of footage that needs to be carefully labeled and have detailed descriptions so that you can go back and find specific clips easily. If I select a clip here, it will bring up all of its file information so I can see what its frame rate is, how long the clip is, what the resolution size is. 
I can also fill out important information about the clip's description, what scene or shot the clip comes from. These are all the things that help keep a big media project organized. The production panel is really a lot like the editing panel, except there's an emphasis on the source and media program monitors. You can also enlarge these panels by hitting the back tick button on your keyboard, and that's the button that's underneath the escape button. This will bring up the window full screen so you can take a better look at your edit. Next we have the multicam panel. This is another straightforward panel that's obviously designed for projects using multiple camera setups. Basically here you can import footage and start organizing clips from the same scene but with different camera angles. I'm not going to get too deep into creating multicam sequences in this video because that's getting a little off topic. However, I will most likely make a video for how to set up a multicam project in the near future. So going back to the editing panel, let's say that you don't really use some of these preset workspaces. You can go to the arrow button next to the panels menu and click edit workspaces. Then you can rearrange or hide any of the panels that you're not using. So that's how you can create and save your own custom workspace in Premiere Pro. Which one of these workspace setups was your favorite? Was it the color grading, the effects panel, or maybe it was the meta logging? Let me know in the comments below. For more information on tutorials for Premiere Pro, Photoshop, and freelancing tips, head on over to my website at scottedwardfowler.com. And please check out my Twitter page too, as I share my thoughts and tips on the world of editing as a freelancer. Also, check out my other videos on Premiere Pro and freelancing, which are posted here on the right side of the screen. Alright, that does it for me guys, see you in the next video.